So yeah, thank you so much. Um, I'm so happy uh, here to have uh, three different panelists from all around the world for this section. So this session is about uh, prop tech in property transactions. So we will discuss more about the uh, property transactions uh, related innovation, uh, what's happening around the world. We have different panelists uh, from different parts of the uh, world. So uh, let me briefly introduce uh, our panelists first. First of all, we have uh, Ms. A.J. Wosenro, uh, who is the Executive Director uh, of Consortium of PopTech Philippines. And um, I, I believe that she is um, uh, well-connected in, 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 in the Philippines and also in Southeast Asia. And then we have Alinla Abbey, uh, who is uh, now based in San Francisco. And also she is a global coordinator for Eastern Europe, Middle East and Africa of National Association for Realtors. So I believe that uh, Ms. Alina Abbey can share the insights, uh, not only from the Bay Area, but also uh, from the Eastern Europe, Central Eastern Europe and other parts of the world. Mr. Wasmin Lauren, uh, my long, uh, long life, long term friend, uh, who is the president for uh, the Asia Pacific region <laughs> of FAPSI, and also uh, uh, he is the founder of Indonesia uh, Pop Tech Association. Uh, because uh, Rosmin is keep uh, traveling around the world, so I also believe that uh, it would be a very interactive section uh, uh, <laughs> for discussing uh, what's happening, especially the property transactions uh, prop tech around the world. So uh, to save time, uh, if I, I just because I just gave a very brief introduction. Uh, how about a roundtable self introduction on something more about yourself, and then we can jump into the different questions. How about Miss AJ Rosero? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Leo, and I'm glad to be here. So as mentioned, I am the executive director of Prop the Consortium, and we're happy to share that we're celebrating our first year anniversary. The inspiration for putting up a prop the consortium is the fintech and the contact. Um, so we have finally decided we want to have an organization that really focuses on the real estate and technology. And so far, we already have about more than 50 members and growing. Okay, cool. So thank congratulations. How about Alina? Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for uh, having me here. Uh, I am very happy to share uh, global insights uh, about PropTech. Uh, I am, uh, my name is Arina Ebi, as you mentioned, I'm based in San Francisco, California, and uh, I am a global real estate advisor. I wear many hats like uh, all of you do. Uh, I, uh, I'm very interested in particular about the prop tech and innovations around the globe in real estate and matching um, the right products and platforms uh, with funds and with end users. Uh, I am, I'm, I'm very focused on that. And uh, I am myself uh, associated with a company uh, here in the Bay Area, uh, actually in, in the US, it's based, it's headquartered in New York called Campus, yeah, which is a big very yeah, technology, very exactly. It's a public company and it's very technology focused. So um, uh, I would be uh, happy to, yep. to talk about the prop tech here in the Bay Area and in Eastern Africa. Europe, Eastern Africa. Yeah, thank you so much, Alila. Rosman. Hey, hello. Hey, ho. Hey, yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mabuhai, good morning. Uh, good evening, Elena. And a good, um, uh, good morning to Asia. I'm Rosman Lawin. Um, I have property development company and also a global investment uh, consulting firm. Mm. In, prop, in PropTech, uh, I'm a president of uh, Indonesian PropTech Associations and also uh, 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 in global stage, I'm president of PFC Asia Pacific. PFC is the International Race of Federations. Uh, we have uh, 72 reps in the world, including uh, Philippines, of course, and also USA. Yeah, so, uh, I'm a member as well. So, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's cool. So yeah. I believe, yeah, you, you can share more insights from, uh, I know yeah. you travel even to Central Asia, 
Yeah, I think uh, the innovation, the real estate innovation there is also uh, picking up um, the pace because uh, I still believe that if the countries are emerging countries, uh, the real estate innovation adoption would be a more, you know, welcome, would be more embraced. Yeah. All right, cool. So um, first of all, the first question, uh, because uh, I think we keep talking about prop tech for five to six years or even seven years or, or even more, a decade. Uh, what kind of trans transformation have you seen actually in the property transactions aspect? Are we doing something great or it still takes time in your region? Say, uh, first of all, can I, uh, could I uh, invite Alina to share the insights about this? Yeah. Uh, so I can talk about uh, 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 real estate transactions here in uh, in California yeah. and the United States. As you know, that uh, we are a market uh, where uh, uh, about ninety five percent of the transactions happen involving a real estate professional, okay, a, a realtor most of the time, uh, which means a member of the National Association of Realtors. Um, and that means uh, there are a lot of brokerages, small and big, that they focused uh, uh, the planning and investment in prop tech products such as uh, uh, property uh, transactions management systems, right? Mm. Um, and I think that what has changed, at least in the last 10 years, um, and what we are uh, all um, focusing and uh, and uh, aiming to is to integrate a lot of the systems. Yeah. So it's to integrate everything from lead generating to CRM and finally mm. the transaction management itself. I think that um, as a matter of uh, shortening the length of a transaction that hasn't changed so much, that's because a lot of factors are involved such as lending institutions and here escrow companies and title companies, government, but, um, uh, I think that um, it's it's uh, it's important to to have an integration and not to to have a real estate professional sign mm. in a lot of platforms in the same time and to save time. Yeah. And I would say the next step will be integrating that with the consumer itself mm. and with the other institutions, and especially with escrow title and oh. uh, with with the lending institutions. And this is this is where it's going. Yeah, I understand that um, uh, even from, uh, especially from those uh, emerging markets, like uh, even Latin America, I think uh, there are great platforms integrating more with the financial institutions uh, in order to streamline, you know, the whole transactions uh, process. Yeah, because there's a huge customer-based uh, market there. So, Rasmin, how about uh, your insights? Uh, anything you have seen in the property chain uh transaction expect for the transformation yeah all around the world yeah just give us some, yeah yeah, yeah. If we know that property the large assets and class in the world is what more than all stock and bonds combined mm, like in last market like us property industry contribute 3.5 trillion to the gdp of which 36 billions of construction spend yeah but however the real estate was one of the last sector to adopt Technology, we have to know that, okay? Because uh, we are still slow compared to fintech. Yeah. Especially in Asia, in Asia, absolutely in Asia. Because um, we are, if we are talking about uh, success story of prop tech, we are talking about ecosystem, right? Mm. Okay, so once the ecosystem is not, is not firm yet, we, we cannot go further. We cannot go further. Mm. What is the ecosystem? ecosystem is government, is institutions, is regulations, is the is the conducive uh, uh, environment? Is the infrastructures that uh, com completely support this kind of uh, technology? So and we can see, I can see Asia still behind compared to US, and uh, because the one that uh, really advanced in the in, in in the world today, for why for from my my experience traveling around the world is US and uh, of course New York and London. I think is one of the. Mm. They, are, they are the most advanced uh, 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 prop tech uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, leaders. Mm. So this is what happened in Asia. So once your ecosystems uh, uh, created a uh, great, okay, I, I, I believe that you, uh, Leo, did a good job for the last, last six, uh, six years promoting prop, prop tech 
Thank you. Um, yeah. yeah. You too. I, I mean, uh, AJ. I did the same thing, but uh, we must keep pushing the governments to to open the regulations because government is government is there. Always say no. Take a look. <laughs> yeah. Is it going to be something like a money laundering or not? So. Oh yeah. It's kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but but some European countries doing very well, like like Estonia. They even can buy property through mm. through, uh, through the current uh, cryptocurrency, like right, as we know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think Actually, yeah, I agree. Portugal uh, too. Yeah. That it's it's yeah. Well, I mean, I think that would be a, a, an entire different uh, discussion to talk about yeah. adapting blockchain yeah. into yeah into, into real estate transaction, right? Yeah, I believe that uh, ecosystem is uh, 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 very crucial. I can say, uh, and uh, especially to Asia, I always uh, talk about. Uh, when I talk about prop tech, I always tell the audience about uh, Asian countries, a parental, we need support, we need endorsement from the uh, government in Asia. So how about AJ? Do you think so? In in the Philippines, uh, do you think the government's uh, role is important in, in, in advocating the usage of prop tech in property transactions? Yeah, absolutely. And Leo, I uh, actually, uh, we're very positive um, that we're going to be getting the support of the government. And I say that confidently because um, with the new administration, um, he is really uh, pushing the mm. government agencies to digitalize um, the processes, specifically um, so th there's there's what we call the DICT, the Department mm. of Information and Technology, and uh, this agency aims to digitalize the yeah. processes of of uh, the agencies. And as I was sharing earlier, uh, we are in collaboration uh, with one of the uh, government agencies in the Philippines that. Um, allows um, or that provides um, loans to home buyers, which is the um, HDMF or the uh, um, the Pag Ibig. Um, so once we are successful in opening the doors for the digitalization of this government agency, we're hoping that the other government agencies will follow and this will mm. create a huge impact um, in the real estate industry. Yeah, very good. I know that um, safe Singapore, they had uh, a kind of, they call it a real estate transformation uh, roadmap that initiated in uh, 2018. I think they, uh, especially they, 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 they want to advocate the usage of data for streamlining the property transactions there. So yeah, I, I, I think government's involvement is also quite important. All right, so let's switch uh, to other uh, discussion uh, Discussion focus on the investment, say prop tech investment, I mean, not property investment. So um, Alina, can you, because, you know, Bay Area, Silicon Valley is uh, such a uh, good soil, I can say, for the venture capital. So how, how how's your thought on the prop, prop tech investment and development there? I think that's the interest in uh, the VC in interest in investing in uh, in prop tech uh, products and platforms is growing. Uh, at the beginning, as Rusmin said, uh, the real estate uh, uh, segment was probably the last in the VC's mind, mm. and it's the last to reform. But uh, you know, just globally, as last year in 2021. The VC's appetite for the prop tech market was uh, about $32 billion. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting, and as we were talking before we started that, that uh, this was a 32% increase since 2020, which is significant. And even what it's more interesting, because this prop tech movement started initially with uh, commercial and lending platforms mm -hmm. interest, is that uh, Forty-nine percent of this capital of this thirty-two billion was poured into residential real estate mm, uh, okay. tools and platforms, and only seven point six percent in commercial and tenants type of platforms. Mm -hmm. So you know that that's very interesting, and um, I would say that Silicon Valley mimics this, but I think that at this moment is by no means 
leading exactly the world and the nations in prop tech. Okay. Uh, there is a lot of interest and a lot of companies, especially in the blockchain and cryptocurrency and metaverse uh, space that uh, they are in Florida, for example, in Miami and in New York and all over the world, really. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I would say that um, um, the focus also here, and we have few companies in the Bay Area that they are active in the lending space in the uh, um, tenants uh, platform, because as you know, that when you rent your first place, uh, uh, it, it could be quite costly. You have to have a deposit, you have to yeah. have the first month rent. And there is some kind of uh, assistance for first time renters kind of platform, which is definitely endorsed by uh, Fannie and Freddie, you know, and that's that type of platform that will have a, a mm -hmm. government endorsement uh, but uh, but there's also a lot of innovation and a lot of trials for tokenization and you know ledgers ledgers for title companies because in the U.S. the um, uh, transactions are public information. It's mm. very easy to to get that data versus some of the Asian countries or even um, Western European countries mm -hmm. where they are private, right? Yeah. But here they're public. Therefore. Mm -hmm. The idea, the aim is to have them eventually on a ledger and tokenize them. Oh, so um, I would say it's a, it's a growing interest. And yes, uh, Silicon Valley, it's very important, is relevant. But I think that the focus, it's all over the world. Mm. And uh, whatever you can find products, they're scalable and they will apply to local mm -hmm. issues. Right, right. So, yeah, I, I, I think um, this is also driving, you know, the, the, the investment trend as well, huh? So uh, how about AJ? Um, uh, any any insights on the uh, investment on prop tech in the Philippines? Are there many prop tech companies being uh, invested, uh, funded? Is that easy to get uh, fundraising in the Philippines? I would say, um, of course, there are challenges, uh, but what we're seeing in... Um, what we're seeing um, in the Philippines is that we're getting um, support both from private companies and um, government. Yeah. Um, so for private companies, uh, we have, um, um, of course, venture capitalists. Uh, we, what's interesting is there's a growing number of um, local and foreign investors that are um, coming into the country, willing to invest on prop tech specifically, um, prop tech like uh, property management, um, something to do with um, automation of home loan buying. Um, also, the other uh, prop tech that we're seeing would be uh, the um, the broker uh, brokerage firms. Um, who um, are matching the home buyers to the banks to yeah. streamline the process and, and to um, speed up the process of approval of the of the loan. Um, on the uh, public as uh, sector, we are we have what we call um, Gonigosha. So this is a platform. Um, it's it's. Um, it's actually a combination of, I would say, private sectors and yeah. public sectors. Um, and what they do is that they support startup um, startups, not necessarily prop tech, uh, but also all other startups. But what we're seeing is um, the with the growing number of, of prop tech um, startups, mm. um, they, of course, um, are given support, but they they go through a selection process. Okay. Just I think just I, I think that also happens in other countries. Um so definitely um we have seen an improvement, you know, mm. compared to the past two years um uh, with things um starting to um with with things starting to I'd say go go back Picking to normal. Yeah. To Getting... normal. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So Things are getting better. All right. Rusman, uh, how yeah. about other parts of the world in terms of uh, the prop tech investment? Yeah. Just say uh, anything um, you want. Yeah. 
Yeah, of course. Uh, I, as I told you, Asia Pacific is is, is uh, the region that's uh, quite uh, still uh, slow compared mm -hmm. to Europe and West. Of mm -hmm. course, uh, U.S. have Silicon Valley, who is uh, the spearhead of this uh, anything but PC and technology. Not only prop tech, but all of, all kind of tech, biotech, uh, what kind yeah, of all, but, all types. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, took me uh, to see the Silicon, Silicon Valley is, uh, uh, surrounding that. It, it was amazing. I was in. I was challenging the. Uh, I was uh, challenging the uh, Hong Kong TDC and also SK, STP to make your your this uh, uh, your greater bay to be something like Silicon Valley in uh, in the mm. future. So I'm going to meet, visit them soon. Maybe we can go together with them. Yeah, so uh, sure. we are talking about investment. Of, of course, in Asia Pacific, you, as we know, as and also you know that uh, from 2013 to 2017. There's a significant numbers of this uh, uh, investment uh, to this uh, Asia Pacific region's area, right? So uh, 179, nine startup uh, received but 4.8 billion, as you know, right? And over 60% mm -hmm. of them are property investment in China and Hong Kong, your regions are making about 23 billion, right? Yeah. This amount. But today is this is not longer a niche phenomenon, especially in development country like in Asia with a sizable population. In Indonesia, I mean, mm. Indonesia is a promising market for the property industry, as its economy has grown steadily in the last couple of years between 2015 and 2017. The country GDP capital increased 3,300 3, to 3,800. More importantly, we have a significant millennials. Uh, middle class that that now can afford to buy homes. Okay, but uh, mm. but as as I said that uh, we still lack a lot of uh, gap of funds. That's why uh, some companies try to do this uh, business gap, uh, providing loan. But I don't see a success story yet because it's it's a challenge. And like mm. uh, AG said, the challenge that we have to support together because yeah. uh, hopefully in the future PropTech can provide. What our governments cannot do, because affordable housing, uh, 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 I said, and as an example, right, we still lack about twelve billion units. But governments mm -hmm. have, uh, as as Philippines as well, Philippines, I think they have eight or six, eight, six or eight billion uh, backlog. But we cannot, uh, government cannot afford to provide that those uh, those numbers in in a, in a short in short period mm -hmm. of time. That's why the challenges and also opportunity for PropTech okay. to, uh, to take this opportunity. Okay, yeah, cool. Thank yeah. you. Um, we are running out of time. Apologies. Uh, we have about three minutes left. So can I have a round table, say uh, one minute per person to tell us about uh, what do you foresee the PropTech development in the coming two years, uh, no matter there's COVID or not, uh, in your area. So may I let Alina to say something first? Yeah. Uh, sure. So, so I think that the uh, innovation wave will continue. And uh, I think that the COVID only accelerated it and uh, it made us realize what we're missing. So I think that uh, the trend will continue on integration on a side of brokerages and, and real estate transactions will be also um, shortening the time of a transaction. That would be very important using AI by identifying um, lending, for example, patterns uh, and mm -hmm. uh, issues and- uh, and Their credit, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, risk and the same in title. That will be identify a AI to underwrite uh, uh, policies for title and for insurance for, for, for loan products as well. Um, and I think another one will be um, uh, reducing costs for the consumer. That will be very important. Reducing costs for the real estate agents, digitalization, electronic signatures, integration, integration, integration. And mm -hmm. of course, I think that for builders and uh, for developers will be uh, also products to cut costs and uh, to, to make the product sustainable uh, and uh, to um, to reorient the supply chain uh, mm. and of course healthy buildings. Yeah, sustainability is, is always the hot uh, topic around yeah. the world now. All right, cool. Uh, AJ, yeah, any one minute uh, saying something yes. in the future? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, thank you, Leo. Actually, you know, as we look into the future, prop tech, as we know, will play a central role in driving further transformations. Uh, what we see um, in the market is that uh, prop tech will continue this, to disrupt um, conventional conveyancing and transforming home buying in three ways. The first one is the use of the virtual and augmented reality in property mm. viewings. And we're seeing several uh, startup companies venturing into this type of prop tech, a blockchain technology, and adopting automated systems for completing paperwork. So we're also seeing a growing number of startup uh, tech um, companies who are venturing in, into this line, and also the online auctions. Um, so definitely the next two years for prop tech uh, is very promising but as mentioned by Alina I think we have to get the support um in terms of the you know the the regulation and mm. um and the other um support yeah, from course. the government like us uh, maybe uh, the ecosystem we're building the community we are building right so every stakeholders should uh, do something to support us. Yeah, I totally agree with it. So, Rasmin, uh, 30 seconds. Yeah, what we, what we need today in PropTech is uh, PropTech and beyond. I can say that because uh, we just not, not only need but property transactions, uh, listing and uh, integrations, AI, VR, uh, drone. We need more than that to address the most important issue today is uh, ESG, environmental, social, corporate governance. Who, can, who will... You will be spearhead to uh, to the the economic activities because everything should be green, circle economy, blue economy, green economy, sustainability, and the all uh, kinds of uh, this uh, uh, words is related to property development. Am I right? So real estate is very is very important to uh, to, to to address the issue. So prop is a prop tax challenge how to uh, how to provide more services uh, effectively, efficient. To make uh, more green buildings, address it. Maybe uh, how to convert it from the old building into all apartment, all uh, office building into green, uh, green uh, and sustainable uh, system. Yeah, is our challenge uh, today. Yeah, I think I, I, at, the, at the end of the day, a prop tech company. You know, I'm sorry, is that it's it's good as long as it solves a problem. Just prop tech for the sake of prop tech and blockchain for the sake of blockchain or metaverse for the sake of metaverse, it's nothing if it doesn't solve a problem. And I think the biggest problem we have is how we build more, more efficiently, greener with less costs, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. correct. And especially nowadays, you know, the investors, the in institutional investors are chasing for those, uh, who as they call bricks doing green. Say in yeah. Hong Kong and everywhere, the stock exchange, they need the listed company. Uh, the listed real estate developers to to make some ESG related investment. So there are actually a lot of inquiries about uh, what kind of innovation on the market they can use for the um, for boosting up, you know, their their green uh, image or actually what they have done for the green. So I I totally agree with yeah what Wasman and Alina mentioned about this direction. So um, thank you so much for sharing the insights yeah, around the world. I mean, uh, the prop tech development, especially in the prop tech in, uh, transactions and prop, uh, property transactions and prop tech investment. So uh, let's take, take this chance to uh, say goodbye to our audience. And I think uh, we will see each other around the world in different events. Thank you so All much. Right. Thanks, Thank Wasman. You. Thanks, AJ. Thanks, Alina. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. See you. Thank you. Bye.